Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Moshwe Shwe, Lesotho traditional ruler who fought colonialism. In Sesotho, which is the language of the Lesotho people, the razor is said to make a shwe shwe sound as it is used to shave. The man who is regarded as the founder of the Lesotho kingdom is known as Moshwishwe, meaning the shaver. Indeed, Moshwishwe was a fighter and like a razor, he shaved off the attempts of European colonialists to conquer his kingdom. Born in 1786 at Menkwaneng in present-day Lesotho, his father was Chief Mokachane of Bamukoteli a sub-clan of the Basotho people. His given name was Lepoko, but when he successfully organized a raid and captured several herds of cattle, he composed a poem of praise for himself, as was the tradition, and in the poem, referred to himself as the razor that shaved the birds of the enemy. Afterwards, he was fondly called Moshwishwe, which means the shaver. As a very young man, he helped his father conquer some other smaller clans and expand his chiefdom. Around 1822, when Moshwishwe was 34, he formed his own clan and became the chief. He and his followers settled at the Butabute mountain. However, that period was when the great Zulu king Shaka was reigning and his armies were conquering other smaller clans forcing many to flee. Even the one who called himself the shaver knew there were some things that a razor could not shave and Shaka's unbeatable army at the time was one of such. So Moshwishwe was forced to move his clan and followers and settled in the Kilwani Plateau. From there, the kingdom of Basotho, as Lesotho was then known, was established with Moshwishwe as the first king. Moshwishwe was smart enough to know he would benefit from the activities of missionaries who had already begun some work in the region, so he invited some into his land, notably Eugene Casalis, Constance Gosselin, and Thomas Arbuset. Casalis became the foreign advisor to Moshwishwe helping him as he related with European foreigners. He also served as interpreter and documenter of the Sesotho language. He served in this capacity from 1837 to 1855. The Boers, who are people of Dutch origins, had initially settled in some parts of Moshwishu's kingdom on his permission, but with time started laying claims of the area with thought of colonizing the entire kingdom, but Moshwishwe was able to suppress them in 1848. This was no small feat as the Boers were no pushovers. They would later go on to colonize Lesotho's larger neighbor. The British also made attempts at taking over Moshwishwe's kingdom, but they suffered an embarrassing defeat in 1851 at Kolonyama. Another British attack in 1852 was effectively put down. Following Moshwishwe's success and as an act of diplomacy, he sent an appeal to the British commander for the hostilities he went through. The appeal helped the commander to save face because in the real sense, he was the one defeated. This act of diplomacy on Moshwishwe's part no doubt safeguarded his kingdom from future attacks from British forces. Following his appeal to the British commander, a peace treaty was signed. That was not the first time Moshwishwe was extending an arm of friendship to defeated enemies. It was a practice he had adopted while he was growing his kingdom. When his army conquered other clans, he always extended friendship to his enemies. This caused many victims of war from other clans to be integrated into his kingdom, further increasing his influence and followership. In 1858, 
The Boers, who had been nursing their wounds from the last defeat at Moshueshu's hand, again confronted him in battle and yet again, they were defeated. But by 1865, Moshueshu lost large parts of his kingdom to them. In 1867, with wars still raging with the Boers and the risk of losing more of his lands to them, the Shaver was forced to appeal to the Queen of England, Queen Victoria, to make Basoto a British protectorate, and so in 1868, Basoto became the Basuto Land Protectorate of the British. In 1869, the British also signed a treaty with the Boers which defined the boundaries of Basuto land and the Orange Free State controlled by the Boers. This treaty was to check any further advancement of the Boers into the Basuto land territory. By the new boundaries in the treaty, Mushwishu's kingdom was reduced to almost half of its original size. These boundaries remain intact in present-day Lesotho. When Basuto land gained independence from the British in 1966, it became known as the Kingdom of Lesotho. Beginning with a very small clan, Mushwishwe grew his kingdom to cover a very large territory. Even though he later lost large parts of his territory, he never suffered any major military defeat from European colonizers, a feat very few African traditional rulers achieved. Mushwishwe died in 1870, marking the beginning of the colonial era in Lesotho. Every year on the 11th of March, a national holiday called Mushwishwe Day is observed to mark the anniversary of his death. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.